I think we should start with uh, the two national anthems. Nigeria and Rwanda. On Saturday, February 8, 2014, the American University of Nigeria played host to a historic international event which bears important lessons for the security and peace of people living in Adamawa State on other parts of Nigeria. You are from the Your Rwandan ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Joseph Habaniza, was at the Washington Hall to lead activities commemorating the 20th anniversary of the 1994 Rwanda genocide, at which more than a million people were murdered in one of the most tragic ethnic conflicts in the modern world history. It was also official launch of Kubica 20 in Yola. Kubica meaning, to remember, in key Rwanda language of the East African country, is in commemoration of the 1994 Rwanda genocide and the bitter lessons Rwanda and other nations must learn from it. Blair Foundation in London. The choice of AUN as host center for Kubica 20 in the Northeast Nigeria was to acknowledge the pioneering of the university and the president Maggie Ensign in forging peaceful coexistence among the various groups and communities making up Adamawa State. The vehicle driving peace and mutual coexistence in the state is the Adamawa Peacemakers Initiative, whose members formed part of the audience in the Washington Hall. The launch was a continuation of the Rwanda Genocide Lecture Series for the 20th anniversary memorial, which was officially kickstarted in Abuja earlier in the month. During from his personal experience, Ambassador Habaniza charged Nigerians to learn from the 1994 Rwanda genocide and embrace dialogue as a peaceful means to resolving disputes. The people who planned and organized the genocide, the genocide against Tutsi in Rwanda were not ordinary citizens. They were highly educated, holders of PhDs, professors, medical doctors, teachers, and so on. We renew our commitment never again and call upon all nations, especially their leaders, to promote peace, justice, democracy, tolerance, and dialogue in their countries. When I talk about leaders, it's not necessarily those who are in power now, but you students and youth, because you are the ones who make the leaders by your votes. You are the ones who can change this world a better place. After all, you are the ones who have more time to live on this earth. Don't allow any selfish politicians spoil it and backing you on divisionism, hard trade, or sectarianism. On the Adamawa Peace Initiative, a non-partisan stakeholder forum sponsored by the AUN, Ambassador Habaniza urged the organization to strive to unify the peoples of Adamawa State by promoting dialogue. In sports, everybody's okay. I was about to say everybody's equal, but somebody's maybe stronger. But there are rules, and everybody respects those rules. And when somebody kicks you in football, for instance, if somebody gives you uh, a tackle, wherever it comes from a Hausa or a Furani or a Yoruba or a Nibo, it's the same. You understand? There is tolerance. Because you have rules and all of you what you want just to win. He said the rest of the continent looked up to Nigeria for direction. In her contribution, President Maggie Einstein attributed the positive changes in the Rwandan economy to the crop of new leaders that emerged out of the post-war era. In the last six years, 50% of the mayors have lost their jobs, mainly because they haven't fulfilled their contracts with the people. And I just believe it's an extraordinary idea that not only do we elect people and hope they'll fulfill their promises, but we, we hold them to it. And if they don't, they've got one year. They have a really interesting system. The whole nation is invited to the presentations, and I've been several times. Dr. Ensign, who lived through the genocide era in Rwanda, has written extensively on the topic, said post-war Rwanda was now a new beacon of hope for many nations in the continent as a result of its social, economic, and political stability. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll read a little bit to you. Life expectancy has doubled from a very low of 28 in 1994 to 63 in 2011. I don't think any other country has seen that rapid increase in life expectancy. Over 95% of the population has health 
Insurance, 72% live within a 60-minute walk from a health facility. 69% of births occur in a health facility. Um, the HIV prevalence rate is now 3%, down from 13% in 2000. I was there working on HIV education in Rwanda during many of those years, and that's a real success story. We have all what have you. At the event were top management staff of AUN, including the provost, Dean of Student Life, Dean of Postgraduate School, Security Consultant, Faculty, Students, and Community, as well as members of the API, three of whose members were preparing to depart for a conference on peace and religious extremism, sponsored by Tony Blair Foundation in the UK. The process. Thank you, Excellency. Presently, 20 Rwandan students are in AUN, studying on government scholarship following a memorandum of understanding signed between the Rwandan government and the university in 2012.